What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so moving right along, today I wanted to take a moment to talk about optimizing the phase between multi mic sources in Studio One. So I know we've got a lot of different third-party plugins that are available where you can purchase plugins that optimize phase and do this in an automatic way. But it's worth noting that with a little bit of editing and once you get used to how to do it, this is something that you can actually do very easily just by editing directly within Studio One. So I've got a guitar performance here and it's a dual mic performance and I've used a condenser Lewitt microphone on one of them and then a Royer R121 on the other. Now, let me just deactivate this plugin for a moment. And the idea is in the mix, I would potentially be using these two tracks in this way where I've panned them out hard hard left and hard right. Let's have a quick listen. So with that being said, one thing I want to do is optimize the phase and get it as close to being perfect as I can. So let's activate this mix tool. I've got a mix tool on one of these tracks and I've inverted the phase. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to pan these hard center. And the idea here is that when you play back two sources and they're identical and you were to flip the phase on one of those sources that it should cancel out. Now in this case, these sources aren't identical, but they're close. They're also a different microphone. But the idea is that sometimes when I'm adjusting phase, I actually want to work with the phase flipped on one channel because my goal is to get it sounding as thin as possible. And then once I know it's sounding as thin as possible, once I remove this mix tool, then it should sound as full bodied and thick as possible because we should be close to phase. So if we take a listen to these two in mono, now full disclosure, these are already not bad, but I wanna make them as perfect as possible. Let me take the phase off for a moment. Now let's bring it in. So you can hear that this is already sounding pretty thin, but like I said, I wanna get this as thin sounding as possible, which tells me that I'm as close to these two being phase aligned as possible. Now, one thing that's really worth doing is you want to find a section where you have some really visible transients, and it might be the case that you have to use the data zoom to dial things up or down a little bit when you're doing this. Another tool that's really handy for this is enable crosshair cursor for tools. Uh, what this does is as I move my cursor, as you can see over here, and I've got my smart arrow tool selected, I have this white line that's, that allows me to line things up really well. One thing that I do when I'm doing this type of editing, I used to actually move the location of the event with my cursor, but one thing that I've been doing since I moved to Studio One is I've been using the slip command. So what I want to do is I'm gonna to come to the very beginning, I'm gonna highlight a little bit of this, and then if we move to our locate selection end, I wanna take a little bit of the end off. Now let's move back to the beginning of that section and I wanna find that same point, which was right over here. So right now, I'm just gonna pull this back to here and let's zoom in as close as we can. Now, I have to identify some things that represent what I think to be the same transient points in terms of the waveform. So this would be a really great one over here. And you can see that these are actually pretty close, but let's use this one, this peak over here. I wanna line that up perfectly with here. Now, as opposed to grabbing this, which like I said, is something that we can do, something that I end up doing quite a lot is I will zoom in really far and I wanna hold down the command and the option key on a Mac, and that would be Alt and Control on a PC. You'll notice that the icon changes. Now I'm gonna click here, notice we have this white line that is going from top to bottom. And now what I want to do is I wanna get this as close as possible. So something probably around there. Now I'm gonna to need to back out a little bit, and I wanna kinda of use these edit points across, and I may verify it and check it in some other areas as well. So here's a good one, for example. Here's another good one. Uh, this one that is going in the opposite direction over here, this is a good one to use as well. You can use a positive waveform or negative, but the main thing is I just wanna use this tool to make sure that these line up as closely as possible. Now, I may move this a little bit back so I could go like something like that. You're not gonna get it perfect for everyone, but you need to find something that's gonna work for most of them. So once this is done, now essentially I can grab the end of this event, 
I can peel this back. And then if we use our locate selection end, we can come to this end over here. Now you'll notice that they're a little bit different. I mean, if you really want to, you could trim these both so that they're the exact same size, or you could leave them as is. But now the idea is that we've done a little bit of editing where we've actually moved this second event to match. Now, hopefully this sounds even thinner than it did before. So we'll start off with, we'll open up our mix tool and you can see that I've inverted the phase. These are both set to mono. And now we'll go ahead and have a quick listen. So that's really, really thin sounding. And then at this point, I could pan them out, hard left and hard right. Adjust the stereo relationship between the two of them, and essentially I would start mixing. So that's it. So just to recap, you want to make sure that you're viewing the data resolution in terms of the waveform as much as you can. A really handy tip for this is to enable the crosshair cursor for tools. This allows you to really have a good visual indication rather than doing this and this. You can see from top to bottom exactly how these waveforms are lined up. And then last but not least, you want to make sure that you're listening in mono and that you flip the phase on one of these. The idea would be to get these as thin sounding as possible. And then once they sound really thin, then that means that they're in a really close phase relationship with each other. Then you could essentially remove this mix tool altogether and begin mixing as you normally would. So anyways, that's manually editing and adjusting the phase relationship between two multi mic sources in Studio One. Really easy to do and can make a huge difference in terms of making your low end work and getting your mix to sound right when working with a multi mic setup. So that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will do my best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.